What is going on guys? Cody from Motorcycle MD and I have at last accumulated all of the things I need to bring in this video on carb cleaning tips, fuel additive conclusions, and do a chemical clean off. Now, many of you guys who follow me on Instagram and Facebook were a part of the discussion of what chemicals that they use to add into their fuel or chemicals that they use to clean a very dirty car. And I've drawn a conclusion with about one, two, three, four, five, six different things that we will try. Many of you might remember seeing this. I've been soaking these jets for about six months in uh, gas. And if my wife saw what I used to do that in, I would probably not have a bed to sleep in. So of course I'll be using these chemicals in a very extreme sense, okay? I'm gonna add some rubber components into them, just some different things just to play around with to see how those parts react to the certain chemicals. I know that a lot of people when they clean their carbs are not soaking rubber parts inside the cleaner. I'm, a, I'm very aware of that. Also, the fuel additives that you use in your gas are very dispersed in a large tank of gas. I'll be using the cleaner all by itself which is way more extreme. I understand that. You don't need to comment below. I already understand the factors, okay? But it's my party and I can do what I want. So I've eaten about, let's say about 500 pickles to be able to gather up enough glasses to do this test in. All right, I'll also be using some plastic containers that I've uh, gotten from the Chinese store bing, bing, bing. to put some other parts in because I realized that float bowls are actually a lot bigger than they appear. I also got some other cool little stuff. I got tons of jets that are just disgusting, which I will show you in a lot closer. Some diaphragms, some vacuum pistons, some valve springs, some float bowls. Yeah, that's it. Woo, sound of my balls. So just an overall summary of what I will be doing is I'll be taking parts that I've collected, but I'll be putting them in these glass containers, putting some stuff into the plastic containers, and we will be letting them sit for about 12 hours, probably look, maybe, maybe 14. All depends on what time I wake up, but I'll be doing a time lapse video that will show you guys the magic that goes on while you're asleep. Honestly, it's probably not going to show anything, but I thought it'd be cool to show you guys anyways. Something that I really want to take the time to do is to thank everybody who has donated their money to just support Motorcycle MD. Because of that, I've been able to purchase the chemicals I needed. I spent, I spent around, I'd say about 30 bucks, all right? I've had a lot of people who are just super gracious with their finances and have supported MD and said, hey, I like what you do. Thank you so much for the information that you provided. Well, that money it allows me to do cool stuff like this, become Mr. White and have some kind of chemical factory and find out what kind of stuff is working best nowadays. So again, thank you so much, you guys, for your donations to Motorcycle MD. I've been working on tons of stuff. I know it's been a long time. Thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for viewing my stuff, liking it, sharing it, all the support that you guys give. I am so blessed to be able to give you guys the value that you need and that you use for your bike as well as get the feedback that I get from you guys. So thank you guys so much for that. So enough talking, let's get right into it. It's science. All right, so let's do this. All right. The reason why I wanted to do this is because A, you know, I'm, I, I'm always down to learn and see something new happen. I love hearing your guys' input on what you would like to see, just because you're curious. And I have the opportunity to uh, test that curiosity with stuff like this. So there's been lots of controversy about sea foam, and lots of controversy about different things that you add to your fuel as far as it comes to like things like the rubber diaphragms in the uh, carb that are very sensitive, all right, to a uh, bad gas. Uh, usually age is the biggest thing. Even things like these, like accelerator pump diaphragm, these can be a little bit more forgiving for certain situations. And you have thinner ones like these uh, air cutoff or bypass valves. These are a little bit thinner that you can find in some carbs as well. All right, these are all um, good. They're old, but they're still good. There's no tears in them. I would reuse them. Same with these pistons. Again, these are old. They've been inside old carbs, but the rubber is still pliable. There's no tears in it. I actually have two of them 
This one's a little, in a little bit worse shape with the dirt, but there's still no holes in it, all right? I, I can pull this apart and um, it's not ripping or anything. So I'm gonna use these for the fuel additive. Everything else is gonna be used however the heck I want. Now I'm gonna be soaking many parts that would need to be cleaned, okay, inside of these with all these chemicals. And like I said before, I'm gonna be using just, I know these say use one ounce to every, one ounce per gallon on both of these. This is a 10 to one mix on the Omega Sonic Cleaner. This uses actual heat to uh, help it as well as some vibration to help it. So um, there's pros and cons to the way I'm doing it and I understand that, but I don't care, okay? This is brake contact cleaner, all right? It's not supposed to be used on, on uh, soaking your carb parts, but I use it to clean carbs out. So let's see how well it does by itself. I'll also be using a household product like Pine Sol. And what I want to do is add a little bit of baking soda in with this as well. Just try it out, you know? You never know. So let's start dispersing this stuff. So these jets, like I said, have been sitting in this molasses mm, for quite some time. Uh, they are dirty. Um, pretty common thing when gas is left inside of bowls, it can turn into this molasses stuff and it smells, the whole shop stinks. I also have float valves in here that are pretty nasty. The plungers are stuck on them. I got tiny idle jets, main jets, all kinds of stuff. Mmm. You get an idle jet. You get a float jet. You get a main jet. You get an idle jet. How many cleaners do I have? One, two, three, four, five. So I got an extra container. Oh no, chem dip. Ah, forgot about this stuff. That stuff is a little bit scarier. All right, I'm not gonna be using that in any plastic for sure. Um, that stuff's a little bit more hazardous. I, I'm pretty confident that that's gonna do a very good job. So I got two things that I think will do very well, the Omega Sonic Cleaner and the Chem Dip. Let's see about the other stuff though. All right, I got some more stuff here. These, are, these came out of very, very old carbs. They are dirty, they are nasty. You cannot see through them. Oh, those are actually emulsion tubes with main jets on top of them, but again, they're dirty. Accelerator pump. This one's just got a little bit of dusting on it. Pretty common, like it, if I took a clean carb apart, this is something that you might see. Cause this little jet here is actually still open. Usually these get clogged up first, um, but it's got surface junk on it, so why not? I also got some diaphragms. Let's throw a diaphragm in the chem dip one. Actually, no. Because you probably wouldn't put this in a chem dip solution, so that's stupid. We got a float bowl. I'm gonna use this one in the chem dip one. I got some valve springs, because I can do what I want. Diaphragms, let's do the seafoam one again. I'm gonna put the whole dang thing in there. Let's do this one will be also the, um, got the valve spring in it. This will be the B12. All right, these are the two fuel additives because this would be used throughout the carb, so on and so forth. Safety glass is on. We're just gonna fill this jank up. Opa! Lid goes on, and so they sit. All right, now I got my good good. Don't ask where I got it from, I can't tell you. Food line. Baking soda. Oh, I'm not making like mustard gas or nothing. That would suck. Pine salt. <sighs> Pine salt BS. Here's our chem dip. Oh. Sketchy. Oh, it stinks. Oh, whew. Well ventilated area is key. Okay, that's enough. Is mm. that? Let's get some uh, B12 chem tool. Mm. 
All right. She's saturated. And this is foam. Uh. Sweet. Now, this one's about to explode. Sketchy. That was a fail. Now, I want to actually do something a little bit different, all right? Because uh, I really want to use more parts for this, and I actually ran out of parts. So, I'm going to use one of these plastic containers. All right, got some dirty jets in there. But I'm going to throw in some pretty nasty float bowls. All right, so I'm going to use that with the Omega Sonic Cleaner. Now, this, like I said, this stuff should be used with heat. Um, and I'm sure that you could argue that most of the uh, seafoam stuff works better with heat because the combustion engine, as it gets cycled into the cylinder, um, it may work better with heat. I'm not doubting that at all. All right. All right, so I'm going to stage all of this and then uh, grab a time lapse video and I'll see you again in 12 hours. All right, guys, so as you probably saw, I had a huge fail last night. Being a creature of habit, when I lock the shop up, I always shut the lights off. And that's exactly what happened. So that time lapse video is shot. So this is actually now 24 hours of them soaking in their solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take each one. I'm going to agitate them each up a little bit just to kind of get some of the debris off. Take them over to the sink, dump it out wash them out with some water, what I would normally do, and then bring them right back here and we will dump them out and see how they turned out. You want to talk about a, a uh, carb clean solution. That's got everything you need right there. I mean, this B12 additive is going to be hilarious. Let's just go one by one and see how they turned out. This is the uh, chemical dip. This one that had the small float bowl. I mean, this is a really old bowl, but it didn't do that bad. I mean, if you were to like wipe this stuff out, it would it would pretty much come right off. So I'd say that that did pretty good. I mean, there's there's always going to be some cleaning after you take them out of a out of whatever solution. There's always going to be some kind of you know just rubbing on it. That ain't that bad. Um, let's see how the jets turned out. Now remember that each one of these got the same jets out of the pile that I had. I, I of course I did put some extra ones in there, but each one got the one of the ones that I had soaking. All right, so, and those turned out pretty good, man. That's, that's not bad at all. Blowing that out and, uh, of course, going through it with a needle is very impressive. This needle is stuck still on this float valve. Uh, I mean, it's hammer stuck. I can see through the main jet. The idle jet is still clogged up. Oh, nope, there's a tiny hole in there. All right, so there's a tiny little hole. So that did pretty well. Chem dip did like I thought it would. A lot of people use that, they've been using that for years. All right, let's try this uh, B12 chem tool. Obviously, you wouldn't be soaking your carbs in this, probably. This is just a fuel additive. But you can see it This it ballooned this rubber out, which is what I thought it would do. I mean, it's like twice as big as it was before, and now it's like super flimsy. So, I mean, any rubber that you put into a chemical, I imagine, would do this. So it's not very surprising, but... If anybody ever said that this stuff would never hurt rubber, well, it would if you soaked it for 24 hours. So, it's still intact. There's no, it's not deteriorated. It's just, now it feels more like a balloon. Okay, so there's that. Let's see how the parts turned out. So this had the dirty valve spring in it, which is what I'm interested in looking at. Um, 
I don't really see. I mean, the crud is pretty much gone. It's not too bad. The jets. See, they surface is pretty clean on them. Here's the float valves. They have a weird varnish on them. That plunger stuck. That one's working. Okay. So the float valves, these would still need to be cleaned up for sure. Um, I would not be satisfied with putting these in the car. Let's see if I can see through any. This one is solid clogged. Solid. Secondary main. Did okay. Uh, this main is still... Nope, there's a hole in there. So one idle jet did not get cleaned. Which is what I thought, because it's not really a carb cleaner. It's just supposed to be ran through the motor. But, I mean, it got the nasty gunk off, which, which is pretty common. But the floats are still... They have this nasty varnish on them. There's still some deposits left. Here's the sea foam. This one had the two small diaphragms and the large one. This one is... It kept the same size. It doesn't look like it's deteriorated at all. It doesn't look like it's it's grown at all. It doesn't look like it's uh, done anything, really, to the rubber, which is surprising to me, actually. It almost seems like the B12 is a little bit more corrosive or has something that the seafoam does not. I didn't look at the chemical compound of each one, but... This one didn't balloon up like this one, and these came out of the exact same carburetor. So, good job, Seafoam. Uh, this diaphragm, it just, th this one feels a lot flimsier. It was stiff, but that's just because of the age of it. Petroleum solution, it would probably loosen up, so. But again, no deterioration of the rubber. Let's see what else we got. So this, I mean, this actually got a lot cleaner than I would think, I mean, look at that. Now the jets, look pretty crummy I mean, look at that nothing really I mean it's changed but not for the better they're still pretty nasty I know it's not a carburetor cleaning solution but it's meant to be put into your carbs to keep things clean so it didn't do what I was hoping it would do with that strong of a mix it's really hard to clog a main jet up completely, so I, I don't doubt that I'll be able to see through all the main jets. I mean, it did great for the rubber, but the metal components, I think they're still pretty dirty. So I got the brake parts cleaner. It did okay. Idle jet looks a little bit cleaner. I mean, it still left a really weird varnish on it. Mm, I'd say it did a little bit better than the seafoam, but not by much. The float valve is okay we need to be wiped down plunger still works the contact brake cleaner has a tiny pinhole that i can see this is the omega sonic cleaner this is when i put the um the bowls in still got some crud the the omega sonic cleaner works really well with heat and vibration but um it did a pretty good job for just standing a, just sitting by itself. That one did really, really well. I'm actually impressed with that without using any heat or anything. So it, it did all right. This one was really bad, so it doesn't surprise me. But all right, mains and idles. They still have some varnish on them. It didn't clean them up as much as I thought it would. This idle is still clogged up. Pine saw and the baking soda. Oh, that's weird. Left this weird like coating all over it. Inside still dirty. Womp womp. This looks like it changed colors. It's kind of weird. But it didn't really clean up the ex exterior too well. Probably not the interior either. But um, it did okay. All of these that I see right now, I would still have to go back through and make sure that the jets are clean, which you should do anyways. Um, but all of them, I would still have to buff up each and every one. Even with the chem dip and the emulsion tube, I'd still take some steel wool and buff these out. Um, all of them could definitely be cleaner. Here's the seafoam one with a little polish on it. 
that one was, I think, the worst for, for metal parts. Very uh, underperforming, left a lot of nasty crud all over everything. So here's that pine saw one. It's got this really dark tint to it, almost like it's been overheated. But with steel wool, you can polish anything out. I think given the situation, each one of these could probably perform better if the carbs weren't as dirty. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and um, watching this whole thing, man. My my real takeaway from all of this was that the seafoam uh, did not damage the rubber like I thought it would. Uh, the B12 did damage like I thought it would. I thought the seafoam would do the same thing as that B12 mix, which really just jacked that thing up. But the seafoam did really, really well on the rubber parts. It did not damage them. That's what I was really looking for was the, was the damaging compound um, that you can add to your fuel. In an extreme case, obviously, they soaked for 24 hours in that chemical. What do you expect? The seafoam did not do well on the metal jets. And they almost looked the same as they went in, minus that gas molasses that was stuck on them. A lot of it's actually still a little, there's some coating on it, of it still there. The pine saw sucked like I thought it would. The chem dip did very well um, on bringing the kind of that, that shine back to the metal. Um, none of them got the crud out of the idle jet per se, which I didn't really expect. The Omega Sonic Cleaner, I, like I said, I use that for all of my professional carb cleans and uh, it works amazing. It did not show up here. I think it's just because of the way it was used, it's meant to be actually heated up and agitated. Uh, and I'm sure that if you heat it up and agitate any one of these, it might do a little bit better, but we're not gonna argue about that. The contact brake cleaner, I usually use that to go back through what I've cleaned. So it underperformed like I thought it would. It's meant for brakes. The B12 did mediocre on the metal. I'd still have to go back through. I still have to go back through all of these the way that they are um, and polish everything up. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me as we dove into this chemical clean off. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below with what you learned, what uh, you, maybe the results that you thought were going to happen before it even finished. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Also, if you're not already, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I post on there weekly, um, and a lot of cool stuff shows up on there that I may not get out on YouTube. Be sure to grab your free troubleshooting cheat sheet. Also, there you can also join my mailing list where you have a direct connection to me. As always, Cody from Motorcycle MD giving you guys quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. See you guys next time.